Okay. First up is Andreas. Oh, we should. <laughs> I'm just going to hang out in here. I'm part of your portfolio now. <laughs> Uh, where's that camera at? Webcam. Can I move you? And there you go. Something like something like that. That kind of works. Oh, you want to learn 3D? Oh, do it. Do it just as a hobby. It's fun. Even as a hobby, you can have a good time. All right, so Andreas. Let's see if we, we open this up. So I would like to, so what would I need to cut out of my portfolio to make it more attractive when applying for a junior environment artist position, which I think you're, you're already a junior environment artist person of, uh, of the industry. So you kind of, you kind of fulfilled that, right? But uh, let's see what else you have said here. And what am I currently missing or what should I focus on to reach a level that would make me hireable? I imagine you submitted this back when you were looking for work. Oh, you're in Copenhagen. Hey, that's a great pro profile picture. It it almost it's almost as good as in person, man. <laughs> um, so let's let's see. So oh, I mean honestly, when I look when I look at all this, I think um, it's it's pretty good. You've got a very focused portfolio right now. This is the camping scene is probably at least thumbnail wise is probably the weakest one. Um, and I think we reviewed this in a discord critique at one point. And I th think the, the problem with it was it's, it was really difficult to like really lock down a strong um, composition. So um, yeah, when, when looking at that piece, I mean, the, the focus is the tent, right? But like the lighting overall is, is, is kind of like an open world approach to lighting. Senpai, what's up, man? How you doing? Um, this is you, isn't it? So like overall, the lighting is pretty unified. So if you wanted to like tighten up the composition, really kind of bringing out and emphasizing this path and maybe telling more of a story than just the tent would, would push it, uh, push it over the top. This scene, dude, I remember you working on this. I was like, dang. Yeah, this this turned out uh, pretty nice. Pretty nice. And then you've got the, this telescope here, the DIN view. <laughs> there is some, some dirtiness to this asset that, um, dare I say, is a little too dynasty. It's a little too on the nasty. So like details like this in here or like, uh, I mean, this, this isn't too bad. The way that this surface right here is reading kind of makes me think that you're using sRGB on, on a map. You're not supposed to be like, there's some weird artifacting going on here. <laughs> uh, the only thing I think I would point out is, so you've got your articles here, which is fine. Um, maybe taking these article, like the color f for this is really kind of distracting. I would, if you wanted to go for a green and, and maybe you're going for the 80, 80 level green, I would just grab this green here. That way it feels more like it's part of the, part of the scene. And it would be a little bit closer to the, the family of the blue here for the experience points, um, article. Yeah. That 80 level green, man, that's, a. Uh, Whoa, whoa, game dev, whoa. I would, yeah, I would definitely uh, switch to switch the green to a little bit like less loud color. Um, and let's let's see what else. Dude, this scene, having a character back there, immediately, like really, is like pushing the scene like an, an extra five five percent. Uh, if I had to say one thing that could be fixed for this scene, oh, I can, I never watched this. So right now the ground is pretty like lifted, right? It's bowed at the top. 
That is a lot of cables. It's awesome. If you could, if you could add one or two cables that are kind of stray from it, it'll really sell the illusion that it's not like a single like spline. You know what I mean? If you can get like one or two that hang from it and kind of go off somewhere else. You'll, you'll smooth out that transition and kind of break away from, from the, this is a spline look. I mean, only artists are going to notice that, right? It's not going to be like, if, if we show our parents, they're not going <laughs> to, they're not going to be uh, triggered by that. Like the rest of us, this breakdown here, I would actually put above the, the material balls and you have enough material balls that are very similar in their overall feeling that you could probably just condense it down to a single image where you just have like, I don't know, three by three by three, or if you have like nine on a single image, but overall this is pretty, pretty strong. Yeah. You're not, you're hiding your tiling really well. I'm not seeing too much tiling problems. Texel density looks pretty good. Nice, nice trash bags. Very nice. Um, the, so the, the thing I wanted to mention is this pathway with this type of material being like stacked on the ground quite a bit, you're going to get a lot of um, moisture and which is going to cause it to like kind of try and curl. And when people are walking on it constantly, uh, you're going to have like the, the commonly traveled paths showing up in the material itself, right? I'm not sure how you would approach setting that up like you could do a, a combination of like uh you could hmm how would you you could make these all part of the same mesh so it's one one asset like and then take all the uvs and pack it on like a second uv set and then substance painter paint a path you could use vertex color if you want to do it like in in that way but uh yeah, just something to show more of a travel path. We'll just kind of break up the, the ground here without it being too uh, distracting as well. Ah, right on time, Timothy, with his, uh, <laughs> his blog post. <laughs> but yeah, you just want to make it feel like there's a traveled path. Um, I think... I think if you were to remove this guy, you would have one solid row and this guy would go up here and you'd probably be, your portfolio would go up by a little bit percentage wise. Uh, this being in a, a single prop, whereas like it's in this, I would argue you should just put that, uh, put that in here. If it's, see it's here, right? So if you did maybe a shot with a couple of close-ups of assets that you're particularly proud of inside of this post, you can get that that one less in here. What are you saying, Alex? Recolor and weights together would would do it. Okay. And I mean, because it's a portfolio, right? It's just a portfolio piece. You could just project some like pathway markings. I love the colors that you use in this. Super, super nice. Um, hmm. This one's very clean. These materials are nice. See, again, it's like a very uh, common um, common materials. Like this one's really cool. But like these are, are very similar, especially these two. So like condensing all of your marble into like a single slide might be good because you just want to do less scrolling if possible. See, and this one looks really nice. This one should be probably near near the top. This one looks like you maybe either did some sculpts or uh, let's see here. It's possible, <laughs> but this could also be just uh, yeah, a substance designer. Okay, yeah, yeah. So this this being near the top, these are quite unique. So those are cool. Whereas like these ones are more generic surfaces. Like this this one's interesting. Uh, this one's really interesting. But when you think about generic surfaces, you only need so many. That yeah, that column uh, trim material looks really nice though. 
Um, but yeah, I think that's all I have to say on it. I would re I would remove this or, or move it to your blog and then fix this color. And uh, you're going to have like a nice set. Oh, like take this guy and put him in here. If you're not ready to cut this, you're also going to like move this in here. We'll turn it into a single line for your portfolio also. Um, but yeah, this is you're clearly the thing I like about these four. If you ended up keeping all of these is that it's very clear that you're exponentially leveling up your your quality. Right. So that that's also kind of nice to see. Um, it, might, it might even be worth uh, making a blog about um, the road from here to here and talking about all the things that you've, you've been gr growing on. The level up is ramping up hard. Next scene's going to be incredible. <laughs> Hobbit's putting pressure on you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully that's helpful. You're in chat, right? Do you have any, do you have any uh, questions? That'd be a, a really cool blog, I think, to just talk about like where where you came from and yeah. See, the other thing that's really nice, and people discount this quite a bit, or maybe don't think about it, but uh, making a blog is like another way to recycle your content in a non like crappy way, like where if you're just posting your stuff over and over again. You're like, oh, look at this thing I made a long, long time ago, and, and you're posting it again. I think taking taking pieces that you've you've made already, right, and then making a blog post about it allows you to add more substance and content to it and allows you to advertise yourself again, right? So it's not just like reuse of your work. It's There's more to it. Alex looks triggered. What's going on, Alex? Did I word that poorly? <laughs> Yeah, I think if you can make a blog post, it's like you can really reuse your content in a, in a good way. But um, yeah, I'll just wait to make sure there's uh, if you have any questions in chat before I move on. It's always nice when you guys are here in chat for your actual review, because then I can there's a little bit of back and forth in, in the uh, comments and I can see if, if there's something that you're all of a sudden curious about you weren't thinking about before. Well, it looks like everything, everything is good. Then let me make sure because it went very, very quiet all of a sudden. <laughs> there are 93 of you in here as well. So thanks for hanging out everyone. If I remove the camping scene, want Harry's oh what's up man welcome learning uh chat just lurking <laughs> oh man that should be an emo I should have a picture of me doing that <laughs> should I then try and add a foliage scene mm. yeah so as, as far as like variety I mean if you if you want to like now that you're in games, you should, and I mean, even if you're not in games, you should be doing what you want to do. Raider, what's up? How you doing? I lurking. <laughs> so if you feel like you want to make a, a uh, foliage scene, then, then go for it. If you feel like it's a hole in your portfolio, then you're doing it to fill the hole, right? Um, don't do it unless you feel like you want to. If that makes sense. I don't think adding it or not adding it is going to do much other than it shows variety. But I really would like to say that you should you should put stuff in your portfolio that you want to put in your portfolio, not to just make it more well-rounded. Do stuff that's fun to you. It's important. That's that's definitely what's important. Okay. I'm going to get it. To the next portfolio, I will. Uh, I will be back. Thanks for posting this, by the way. <laughs> 